So here we see DeepSeq R1. Uh, right here you have 8 billion parameters. All it's right. running on the NXP. Yeah, it's running on the NXP IMX810 Plus application processor tied together with the Kinara R2 um, machine learning processor. It's in this box right here. Oh yeah, you can see it. It has a heat sink on top. Um, it has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM uh, and it runs at uh, 40 tops. Uh, and we can see here it's running DeepSeq R1 in this case, which is a reasoning model, which is open source. And the power of DeepSeq is that it can reason like a normal human being. So before it sends out an, uh, an answer to your query, it will go through all of the thinking process like a normal human being, and it will challenge its own idea several times before it gives out an, a result. It might give 30 seconds, one minute. How long it's going to take to give an answer? Uh, about a minute in this case, but it depends on the model size and uh, what accuracy you run the model at. It's very dependent on the use case. And it's open source, it's free to use. Exactly. And it's hardware accelerated with a Canara. Yes, it's open source. As you've said, it's totally free and it's accelerated <laughs> with the Canara in this case. So um, you can see I've asked it here a, a fairly difficult question. And I've asked it, what should I do if I have a car crash right now? And you can see up here, it's the result. It gives me a step-by-step -step guide for a car crash scenario. And you can see how nicely it puts everything together. We have all of the steps with, um, um, with uh, securing position, calling for assistance, everything that I would need to do in such a scenario. And if I go up a little bit, you can see the entire reasoning process that it had to take to be able to get here. So you can see it's speaking like a normal human being. For example, right here we have, let me start calling, uh, my, let me start by recalling what I know from basic safety training. And then, then it's, it goes through all of the motions. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, what have people been asking here at the show about this? Uh, are they asking how soon is available? Oh yeah, well, it will, NXP is currently in the process of uh, acquiring Kinara, so we don't have uh, too many details publicly available at the moment. But uh, it's a very powerful collaboration we have with them, and we want to make it available to as many customers as possible in the very near future. And you have another demo right here. Hi. Yeah, hi. So, yeah, so here we have our multimodal Gen AI demo. It's uh, running completely at the edge. So everything you saw here and you are about to see, it's running at the edge. So, uh, we are running LAVA, and LAVA stands for Large Language and Vision Assistant. It's an open source model, and, and basically this model internally has two components. It has a vision encoder, which is connected to the LLM, and together they allow us to analyze images. So, everything is running uh, locally, as I said. So, we have privacy, we have uh, low power consumption, low latency, and uh, uh, in security, so it's all in there. All in there. So this NPU has 16 gigabytes of DDR memory, uh, fully dedicated for the the AI models, right? And it's connected through PCIe. So I'm going to ask the uh, LLM to describe what it sees in this image. We think it's a very challenging image because it's a little bit blurry and the water is hard to see, right? Uh, so let's ask a very generic question. Let's ask uh, describe the image. The first time, uh, it will need to pre-process the image, extract the features, and then send those together with the input prompt, which is a question, to the LLM. The first time, it's going to take around seven seconds. So there it is, seven seconds, time to, to first token. And uh, we are getting the detailed description of this image. And all this is running offline. Right, there is uh, no connection to the internet. We are very, uh, uh, we, we know that our customers look for privacy, so this is a very private uh, system. So we see that the description says that the floor has visible water, so it's capable of detecting the water. Uh, but let's say, just for the sake of showing, if I want to, uh, again, ask another question, is there water on the floor? So now uh, the mo model already knows about this image, so with just 1.5 seconds, I get the answer. Okay, so we can also show our vision pipeline working. This is a real-time video, uh, video stream, right? So I'm going to take a quick 
picture and then I'm going to ask to describe what it sees. It's Charbax with a DJI Pocket 3. I hope that's what it's going to say. <laughs> All right. So, seven seconds. Yeah, first we need to extract the uh, image features and then the LLM will take seven seconds for the time to I first. I hope it doesn't open. say it's a bald guy who needs exercise. <laughs> okay, we'll see. This image can adult male, what appears to be public setting, possibly an office uh, event space. Short hair, okay, that's okay. Uh, wearing glasses, not really, but okay, that's fine. Uh, he's dressed in a dark color polo shirt. Oh, nice. Does it say, does it know it's Uniqlo? No, it doesn't show the brand. Uh, he holds what looks like two electronic devices. One an iPhone. There's no iPhone. It's a DJI. That's fine. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, well, we haven't fine-tuned the model. This is an open source model. We took it. So, of course, if you want to create a specific application, you can then go and tweak the model and fine-tune it for, for it to be more accurate. Uh, but it's great, right? We are getting very, very accurate uh, uh, descriptions uh, with, with the scene. And we can also show you uh, some examples for use cases, right? So now we can uh, show you this video. This is an Amazon delivery guy that is walking to, uh, you know, deliver a package, but all of a sudden he thinks it's a hot day and he jumps inside <laughs> the pool. <laughs> so let's uh, show you basically what we do is we are sampling this video. We are taking four frames for this one and we are going to send them to the LLM and ask it to describe what happened. And this is the previous summary that was generated. It'll take time to generate a new one because it has to process all the frames. Uh, but basically it's saying, hey, there's someone um, that's about to enter the pool or exiting the pool. So think about it. If you have this in your, ho in your home and uh, at the end of the day, you have this brief summary that was uh, generated throughout the day, you go and you look, oh, okay, there, there was someone jumping in my pool, but I wasn't home. Um, you w maybe want to go and look at it. But there's something more interesting. Now we are hearing about gen uh, the agentic AI, right? These uh, agents. So these can be used to then build an agent and act upon of it, right? So like uh, we were showing, we have DeepSeek with reason capabilities. Now that can be transferred to this kind of a system and reason with the vision data, right? And try to take actions. All right, so shipping? Oh, uh, sorry, what? It's available. Oh, yeah, no, as my, my uh, colleague said, uh, we are still transitioning with the acquisition of Kinara. Uh, we hope very soon we can have this uh, ready for our customers. It's still, uh, it's still uh, in, in, the, in the way, right? 